Good morning, Herbalife. How are you feeling? Did you have your shake today? Okay. Then your day has started out right. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. And I want to thank you, Jerry, for taking my whole speech away from me this morning, because everything she said, I'm going to say in stereo, or for those of you old enough to remember, quadraphonic. Remember that one? <laughs> yes, you do, Leslie. We've got something special at Herbalife, ladies and gentlemen. You feel it? You feel the momentum? You know, I've got this big speech in front of me, and last night I went home to try to get some sleep, and I don't sleep well before these speeches. You know, I get a lot of anticipation, you get a little nervous, and you get excited. And you think about where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. And I got very reflective last night. And I really did. And I even got, you know, I'm a very emotional guy. Some of you, unfortunately, have been the recipients of my emotion when it's not been in control. But most of you have been the recipients of my love and adoration, my respect, and what you've done and how you've built this company. And that reflection goes back to the day I first met Leslie and board of directors of this company and the private equity guys who bought Herbalife when they were interviewing me for the job. And they had all these candidates and one of them asked me, what can you do here? And I said, look, all businesses are the same. They're not different. They're all content and distribution. I worked at Disney at the time. We were very proud of our content, best content in the world, whether it was a theme park, whether it was an animated classic, the videos that I was responsible for are DVDs now to put on the shelf, and there's distribution. And in my mind, distribution was bricks and mortar. It was these Walmarts and Kmarts and Carrefours and Oshans and you go Corte Ingles and you go on and on around the world to the major retailers. And it was bricks and mortar. And we put a product on the shelf, we'd advertise it, we would make every mother in the world feel guilty if she didn't buy a Disney video, and she promptly responded by pushing her shopping cart to the right direction, and she'd go into those shelves, and there'd be a massive amount of product, and we hoped that she would find our product in the middle of all that clutter, those competitors, that other stuff. So we would brand our Disney sections, and we would make sure that people responded to us and do those ads and scare the heck out of them, tell them that product's going back in the vault, and it'll never come out again, so you better get it right now. And we would talk to the retailers about velocity of sales and how quickly it was going to happen and their margin opportunity and their volume would be fantastic. We spoke this language. And so in my mind, when speaking to Peter Castleman and Jesse Rogers back in those days, the names that you up front know very well from all your encounters and well thought out meetings with them, was that this is no different. This is just content. It's a product and it's distribution. It's just getting the product out in the marketplace. Well, folks, it's a lot different. It's a whole lot different. And it took me a little while to get it. And, and as that journey that so many of the Chairman's Club and Founder Circle helped me with, because thank God you wanted me to win too. You wanted leadership, you wanted someone to come in and stabilize, and you wanted a team here to build for you the opportunity that Mark started in 1980, that dream, that reality that you knew was existent, but knew that we were in a moment of change. The world was changing, the company was changing, 
Mark was no longer with us. We had an opportunity to go forward, but we needed a direction to guide that opportunity. When I thought about the distribution when I first came to the company, I didn't have the realization or the understanding of bricks and mortar was passion and emotion. It was flesh and blood. It was people's livelihoods and their realities. It was their families. It was their goals and dreams. You didn't hear those words in Walmart when you went to Bentonville and they put you in those picnic tables with the hay on the floor and tried to demean you from the moment you entered until the moment you left because they wanted you on a lower rung from them in these little rooms. We took Frank Wells, the president of Disney, to Walmart one time. And we sat in a little waiting room where we were going to pitch a big idea to Walmart about let's combine the Disney enterprise at Walmart so we could have our toys and our dolls and our clothes and our videos and our music and our books and our audio all in one section. It was a big idea that we had to go in there with that. And they kept us waiting. We had a 10 o'clock in the appointment in the morning. This was the president of the Walt Disney Company. Flew down there in his Gulfstream jet in his three-piece suit ready to be lauded for his greatness. And he was put in a little waiting room, a little fold-up chairs, and Frank looked at me and said, do they know who I am? And I said, unfortunately, Frank, they don't give a damn who you are. Because to them, your volume and your margin, and you're nothing else. Because if they could figure out how to get their own characters in here, they'd do it in a second. That's why they got Sam's Cola and that's why they got their own Kleenex, and that's why they've got their own aspirins, because they're going to reverse engineer you in two seconds, and they're going to beat the crap out of you. And so they made us wait. We go in and sit at this little picnic table. We make this big pitch, and they leave. And Frank goes, that's it? And I said, that's it. There was no emotion. There was no passion. There was no care. There was a product and a shelf and a big box to put it in. Is that the way of the future? Is that cold, incapacitating way to retail a product? Is that us? Is that the way we do things? No. No. It took me a while to get that. And then you look at Herbalife. You meet a distributor. He talks to you about the product. Shows you his book, her book, her pitch, her story. This is me before her life. This is me after. This is me at 240 pounds. This is me at 160. This is me who has changed my life. This is me with passion. This is who I am. open that pitch book a little more and they say this is the apartment above the garage I used to live in in the city that I moved to as either an immigrant or as a woman in the community who was kind of downtrodden and my husband left me with three children and I didn't speak the local language and I didn't understand the marketplace I was in and I met Herbalife on a bus bench and I cleaned homes and 10 years later, I went back and I purchased one of the homes that I cleaned. And that's an Herbalife story. And I can point out the names in here and the faces and the stories because it is about that passion and emotion. It is about that flesh and blood. And our way to the market this is the way of the future, it's not the way of the past. We're not a product on a cluttered shelf. We're not asking a consumer or a customer to figure us out by sending them into a store and say, gee, what is this? 
And the clerk turns it over and says, that's $39.95, that's what that is. But what does it do for me? It's $39.95. It lightens your wallet. That's what it does for you. We give people the opportunity to improve their lives. We give people an opportunity to change their lives. You heard Jerry say it up here. Mark told her, you work hard. You go out there and work hard, and you can change your life. You can change people's lives in Herbalife. Today, my job is very simple. It's to help look at the future with you, to inspire you, to motivate you, to excite you. We're going to celebrate a little bit. But as I reflect here on those early days in the company and coming to understand who we are and what we are and where we're going, I am more excited about this company today than I have ever been. I am more excited about the promise of Herbalife than I have ever been in any time in this company. So in that reflection, that future, they all come together, those moments. We've had some hard times in here. Before the turn of this decade, during this decade, we have a people attack us every now and then. They're looking for the weakness, the weakest chain, the weakest link in our chain. And guess what? We can't let that happen. We have to step up to a responsibility as we get larger, and we're going to add another billion in retail revenue this year. We're going to continue to do that, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to get bigger. And more people will be skeptical and doubtful about who we are and what we do. We have to be the best. We have to be the best at what we do. We have to have the highest integrity at what we do. We have to appeal to the best part of ourselves. Jerry said it, fun people, nice people, enjoyable people to be around. Our attitudes and our effort have to be reflective of the best that's in the human spirit. Des said it this week on stage, our expectations have to be real. What we give others, we don't need to make anything up. We've got an unbelievable team in this company today of distributors, of doctors and scientists, of employees, of executives who have the same mission. We want to improve the nutritional habits of this world. We want to make this a better place. This week I read an article that said in the U.S., just in the U.S., so think about this globally, $168 billion dollars will be added to health care costs this year because of obesity. $168 billion this year, and that number will increase. I also read that this may be the first generation born on this earth in centuries that will not outlive its parents because of obesity. Those aren't fiction, those are facts. Those are people who are putting it out there worried about this epidemic of obesity. Mark started this company on a simple premise. Lose weight now, ask me how. We can do it. We can help people with our protein shakes, with the opportunity to exchange a high-calorie meal for a low-calorie meal. Interesting, last week, there was a mild rebellion in a major snack food company, a major packaged goods company, who took their CEO to task for trying to be a nutrition company. Took him to task, took her to task. Distributors, bottlers, retailers said, this doesn't work for us. We like snacks and sugar. That's what people want. Give it to them. What's this nutrition company thing that you're up to? We don't understand it. We don't get it. This is trying to take a company from here and put it here. Our company is here. We're about nutrition. We're about changing people's lives with great nutrition. We're already here.
amazing. All we want is the best nutrition product on the face of this earth, to be the best nutrition company. Direct sales is our method to the market. Multi-level marketing, direct sales, that's our way, that's our pathway to the market. Person to person, individually, eyeball to eyeball. The more we achieve that, then I'll guarantee you this company will continue along the road to the best product in the world. We have the best nutrition product, we will get better. Our product for heart health, our product for skin care, our product for weight loss, our product for sports nutrition. We're just gonna get better. We've got an amazing company and an amazing responsibility to make sure we are at our best, that we are speaking to our highest level of responsibility and integrity every single day, that we don't give the detractors one inch in which to operate against us. And they're out there, and that's okay, because you know something, they'll make us better too. Make us stronger. And that's what this company is all about, because you saw those kids up there just a few minutes ago, that next generation. And we'll come back to those kids in just a little, in just a few minutes here. You got something special, we've got something special. I didn't know it the day I walked in here. I understand it more today and I'm more passionate and emotional about this company than at any time in the past because of the promise of the future. And if I have one job here, if I have one job, it's to take Mark's dream, protect it and grow it. Make it more relevant than ever before. Make it more available, more access to us, to our products, than ever before. That reflection last night, obviously, I didn't get a lot of sleep. The passion, the opportunity, the belief, the people, and what we've built. This isn't a Walmart meeting. They have meetings on Saturday morning at Walmart. And they talk about volume and margin. I've been in those meetings. I've presented at those meetings. I took a gospel soul music group in there to sing songs from Lion King one day, and that was the most stone-faced crowd I've ever seen in my life. I thought, what is it going to take to move these people? My God, their feet are in concrete and their minds are in the books. Let's get them rocking and rolling in here. Let's have a little fun, you know? This is Herbalife. So, that's the serious reflection fart. That's Michael behind the podium. Now I'm gonna unleash a little bit here on you. I think it's time to celebrate. I think it's time to celebrate. Mark Hughes had a dream. He said someday we're gonna go to five billion. Some of you guys didn't believe it. You went through some tough days with Mark and in this company, and I'm looking down at our leaders now, ups and downs, ins and outs. What was going on, attacks here and attacks there. But where are we today? What are we gonna do tonight? Des and I are gonna stand on this stage. We're gonna have the tremendous honor to give the top 10 checks away in this company. The cumulative value of our bonus tonight is $52 million. $52 million. Give me one of those checks. <laughs> wow. So that means we have crossed the magical $5 billion barrier. You've heard this all week. Five billion in retail revenue. Three and a point four billion net sales. You know where we're going? 10 billion and 20 billion. Now, for all our analysts who are in the room, we're in dream state right now, okay? For my board of directors who are in the room, for my compensation setting, 
we're in a visionary state here right now, okay? Just so we're clear. We're taking a moment because Mark had this dream about five billion. Nobody sat down and said, well, you're not gonna get to five billion and your compensation isn't gonna go that far, so therefore you're gonna set this. You know, that didn't happen. This man, he looked out there and he said, I got this dream. We're gonna get to five billion. Because he was a visionary. Just like visionaries and all the time, Steve Jobs and Wozniak got in that garage, Hewlett and Packard got in that garage. Henry Ford got in that garage. Mark got in his garage. Everybody came out of these garages. I'm gonna say, build a nice garage, ladies and gentlemen, because that's where things happen, you know? Forget the offices, just build a really nice garage. Because <laughs> that's where all the dreamers come from. They come from a garage. So start your business in your garage, all right? That's where it all happens. Funny, at home, my office is in my garage. And my wife loves it that way. Get them in the garage. Mark Stream, 1980, out of the trunk of his car that was rolled out of his garage. And here we sit today, five billion. But we're just getting started. We're just scratching the surface of what can be. We haven't penetrated the markets and communities, anywhere close to what we're gonna see. We did this, we did this five billion by opening up a bunch of countries, by skimming the surface, by going deep in a few countries. But our vision for the future, this global vision that we have today, is to go city by city. You've heard this all week. Take this company city by city, community by community, and build Herbalife. Now what does that mean? That means we've gotta have the best product in the world, bar none. We have to make sure that our product stands up to every bit of science, that it had performs in the marketplace, that people who take it get results and feel better, whether they're looking for weight loss, they're looking for energy, they're looking for their skin to feel better, heart health, brain health, right here. We're not in the medicine business. We're never gonna be. Leave that to others. Big pharma companies, they've got that part wired, let them have it. We wanna create less customers for them. That's our job. Our job is a healthier nation, is to build opportunity through our product. How does this all work together? Well, it works by having your product, your business opportunity, your brand imitation, or image and reputation all in the same boat, all in the same arena, so that we are looking at all of those as the composition of Herbalife. You know, my daughter asked me a funny question a couple weeks ago. She was doing, and sorry, Chairman's Club and 30K, you gotta hear this story again this week, but she was doing a career day research, and she said, Dad, can I come and follow you at work one day? And I said, sure, what day is it? And she said, well, it's X day, it's Monday. This. I said, oh my God, I said, that couldn't be worse. So I got this meeting, that meeting, and blah, 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 blah. And honey, I can't have you in those meetings. She says, well, then I have to interview you to find out what you do at work. She said, okay. And so she had this list of questions and what she was going to ask me at work. And she said, are you in charge of the sales? I said, mm, sort of. You know, our distributors do the sales, and Des and Rob and all of our country people, they're, they're kind of, you know, they're, they work on the sales side, so, you know. I should get a little box, puts no, checks no, you know. So do you do, do you do the marketing at your company? I said, well, you know, we've got a whole marketing team and creative services and, and we've got all these people. She said, got it, no. Uh, you know, she, she says, uh, do you do the legal work? I said, no, you know, I got Brett and we got the whole legal team in there and they do all, no. Um, she said, what about the manufacturing? Do you do, you know, the manufacturing? and?" Supply chain, distribution, all that. She had all these words. I said, well, that's Rich's job, and he's you know, responsible for all our chief operating officer and Dave Pizzullo and his team and built all this magazine. Boom. She says, well, well what about the science? Because you talk about science a lot. They said, well, you know, that's Steve Hennig and David and his team. I said, no. She 
she said, she, she looked at me and said, Dad, what do you do? I said, well, honey, and I was, had to be on my feet here. I said, I said, well, you know, honey, I said, look, I, I'm, I'm kind of like Huck Finn or Tom Sawyer, you know? I said, my job is, you know, we're on, we're on an island. And I said, I got to climb up in the tree every day, get my little telescope out, and see what the future looks like. Put a foot in the future to see where we're going, to chart a course. You know, and so she said, uh, so you're a dreamer, is what she said to me. I said, yeah, honey, you know me well enough to know I'm a dreamer. And I'm one of those people who believes that dreams come true because you dream out loud. And you dream about where you're going to go and what you're going to do. And she said, well, OK, Dad, but what's next in your company? So let me share that with you today and where we're going and why the product and the business opportunity and the brand and our image and our reputation are all going to work together to take us to 20, 10, 20. I, I got 30 on my mind for some reason, but it just, you know, you get me up here long enough, I'll be to 50 before the day's over. But I got a lot of volume points on my mind right now, okay? Where are we going to be with our product? We're going to be the best nutrition company on the face of the earth. We're going to be known 5, 10, 15 years from now as the nutrition company on the face of the earth. We will have the nutrition solution for the world. You have to have good foods. There's no doubt about it. But we will supplement that. We will give people globally the opportunity. I mean, guys, how many more scares do we need? before we scare ourselves into reality. Pink slime has been removed from the meats in your grocery store shelves. Isn't that nice to know? Pink slime has now been removed. How many years have we been fed pink slime? In our company, our goal is to put nutrition into our products, not to take it out of our products for margin and volume opportunities. We want to put nutrition in. We want to bring you scientists and doctors and PhDs to help develop the greatest product in the world. Today, I'll put our science staff up against just about anybody. Someone out there may have a bigger group of scientists, but I don't think they have a better group of scientists. The evolution of science today is moving fast. We're reorganizing the formulas of our products. When Steve Hennig, our chief scientific officer, Steve, stand up and say hello to everybody. Good morning, Steve. When Steve Hennig joined this company, I remember the interview to this day, Steve, in Mark's old office over in Century City. And he came from the major food industry. All the big ones, ConAgra, Ocean Spray, you name it, and he's been there. And the arguments as a scientific officer that he had in those companies was the constant removal of nutrition from the products. And I said, Steve, you're going to do, you're going to reverse course here. You're going to put nutrition into our products. He said, Michael, that's an expensive proposition. I said, you want to know something, Steve? The price of quality only hurts once. And I remember that conversation well, that we want a high quality product. We want the best product in the land. So we tasked Steve with an enormous job. But even previous to Steve, I had an opportunity to meet and spend time with the head of the Human Nutrition Center at UCLA, a man who's got more letters after his name than anyone I know, PhD, MPH, blah, 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 MD, Harvard. All this stuff he's even written about in a book. He's got, his own, he's got his own handle, his own name. But he's got a passion 
the nutrition excellence that he brings to this company every day. We run a science lab called the Mark Hughes Center for Cellular Nutrition up at UCLA. And he goes through and footprints, fingerprints, excuse me, fingerprints, all of the ingredients in our products to make sure they're consistent and they deliver on what the promise that we say on the can or through your mouth is every single day. That's David Heber. Ladies and gentlemen, David Heber from UCLA. <laughs> then what happens? Well, there's this discovery in 1998 of this molecule called nitric oxide. There's this little discovery that happens. Little discovery. This is such a game changer in the world of science. This huge discovery. Some people think it's the Linus Pauling discovery, the vitamin C of this century, that when we fully grasp the full potential of nitric oxide and really understand how it can improve blood flow, heart health, we are going to be on to something very big, that health will improve. Not a medicine, but a health product. So this gentleman comes to us, and he's got a little credential attached to him called a Nobel Prize, just in case you missed that. And he develops a product for us, and he becomes part of the family and tours the world and puts our product into place. And then he comes to us and says, we need a core heart health line in this product, in this company. And so we develop a core heart health line which if you're not taking, take, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't have your customers taking, get them to take it, because this is one of the best products we have, and it needs to be lifted up. It's our core heart health line. But this gentleman is now all Herbalife, and he's our guy, and he's a Nobel Prize winner, and he's Dr. Lou Ignaro, and he's here with us today. Lou, God bless you, buddy. But we're not stopping there. I mean, these, are guys, these guys have been working with us day in and day out. And so recently, David introduces us to the gentleman who's got one of the strongest set of credentials in brain health. He's up at UCLA. He's got, he's a speaker. He goes on the major networks just on CBS a couple weeks ago. Forgot to send you an email and congratulate you on that. Everybody else did. So this is my email to you. Congratulations. For that, we're doing a little work here today. That's all right, if you don't mind. We're stepping in the office for a minute here, doing a little work, congratulations. But you're gonna see more innovation come out of us. And the interesting thing is when David and this gentleman who I introduced just said get together, they say that, you know something, Michael, the best thing for brain health is gut health. Because the obesity that we experience in people robs the brain of some of the sugars that make it function. And I hope I'm saying that correctly. I'm trying to keep it simple, fun, and magical here. but. Every day is a learning experience for me. That'll keep you young, learn something every single day. You'll stay younger. But this gentleman comes to us with credentials, with an opportunity for us to explain into the brain health region. Now, guys, think about this. There's the largest group of human beings ever entering their 60s. I know, Leslie, isn't it a bummer? You know, it's a real bummer. She's going, oh, no, not me. <laughs> Honey, you don't look a day over 35. We're heading into a new direction. A new area. See, this is the translation. You send a joke out, and then it comes back. It takes a minute. You just got to wait for it, wait for it to return. Ladies and gentlemen, this guy's an expert, and he's going to help us down the road to understand how our products work better to build brain health, that maybe we can beat off some of the effects of old age, that maybe some of the things that, where is my car, will start to you'll remember better. You know, where is that car of mine? Didn't I park it over here? Thank God for those clickers, huh? The cars talk to you now. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Gary Small. Gary, stand up and say hi to everybody.
Right, I'm not even, I'm just getting warmed up here. And Barb is all mad at me now because she said, don't introduce them all because it'll take forever. And I said, you know something, we got a few minutes this morning. I hope you don't mind me going through these because this is a high class, high quality group of human beings. You know, we've got a great skincare line in the company, but we know we have to move with the time and the age. We have to get our ingredients right. We have to figure out the best way not only to have the greatest skincare products, but what is a way we can put these inside a business opportunity? Can you imagine clubs, whether it's a breakfast club, a nutrition club, a club, 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 whatever club it is, that if we could possibly do a little more skincare in there and deal with some women in there, make them a little prettier, make them feel a little younger, maybe even the men too, you know, why not? Why not? So we went out and found this guy hanging out at Estee Lauder, who was the head of science at the company. Credentials, as we say in the Midwest, up the wazoo. This guy's got incredible credentials. And now we've let him alone. We said, go, go think, go be, go do. Create for us the best skincare line on the face of the earth. So our distributors, and understand how our distributors work. Take the time to understand their business methods and build for us not only a product, but a product with an opportunity to personalize the sale. So he's going into areas and Folks, I'm going to let it loose on you a little bit. We're going to have an acne skincare product come out of here. That's a huge problem out there. I did it. I'm not supposed to say these things, but I'm doing it. Our analysts are writing it all down right now. We're going to have some anti-aging products and some skin nutrition products that are going to blow your mind. Man, am I putting the heat on you right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Paolo Giacomoni. Say hello, Dr. Paolo Giacomoni. Guys, just in case you didn't know this, we're having a meeting right now and I'm setting your MBOs out right there right now. So we're getting it, the board's here, the analysts are here, distributors are here. We're building expectation for you. They're starting to sweat a little bit over there, I can feel it. John, was it two or three years ago on that bike ride? I always forget, three years ago? Three years ago, and you know me, I'm passionate about my sports and passionate about my bike riding. I'm aging a little bit, but there's these things called time trials. And so you race against the clock. And they have this little time trial up this road called Payuma Road out there in Malibu. And it's about an 1,800 foot climb, about eight miles, seven miles, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's a grinder. It's a real grinder. And so you race in this time trial, and, and so I get up to the top of this thing, checking my time, seeing how I'm doing. And there's these two young guys up there, out of the trunk of their car, got a little Mark Hughes thing going here, passing out samples of a nutrition product, an endurance product called Prolong. So I go over and I grab a couple of these samples, bring it back to Steve. <laughs> I said, Rich, Steve, I said, run this through the NMRI. Let's check this bad boy out. Let's see what we got here. And they came back and said, wow, this is quite a formula. This is pretty good stuff in here. Carbohydrates, electrolytes, proteins, great mix, great blend. I said, hmm. Called these guys up and said, hey, you want to go on a bike ride with me? They're like, who are you? What do you want? Very suspicious. We've got our own company. We're distributed in bike shops all throughout Southern California. I said, how about distributors throughout the world. <laughs> I said, you might want to think a little bigger here. You might want to expand your horizon a little bit here, boys. They were living in a one-bedroom apartment together, and they used to hook the cable television up during the Tour de France. These guys were broke, OK? But they had their own company. They were proud of it. They built a great product. They got something special going. So we kept getting a little more bike rides, a little closer, invite them down to the company. You know, it takes a little while. You know, you recruited a lot of people. Sometimes it takes a little while to get them warmed to Herbalife, right? To understand where we're going and what we're up to because we believe in a healthy, active lifestyle. And this is perfect product for us, endurance product. So we get them in. I'll spare you the long story, all the suspicion, all the doubt. We finally get them over the edge. We buy their company, put a little money in their pockets, probably for the first time in their lives. <laughs> They both go out immediately and buy new cars, and I went, yes, 
we got him. <laughs> you, know, you know, we got him, boys. They're ours now. And all the while, he's up at UCLA getting a PhD in biomolecular science or something, whatever it's called. David, help me out here. What is Biochemistry. Thank you, David. Biochemistry. Gets a PhD. This is a smart guy. In fact, he pulled his hair out through his last year of school. <laughs> it's amazing what happens on the way to those PhDs. Look at this. Look at all these guys with PhDs down there. None of them got any hair left. I don't get it. <laughs> Must be a heck of a thing to get a PhD. <laughs> <laughs> Pull hair out, damn it. That's what a PhD stands for. <sighs> Sorry, Leroy. You must have a PhD, too. Uh, um, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, the man behind Herbalife 24, would you welcome Dr. John Heiss? <laughs> you know, you get the stage, you get to pick on you. Hey, listen, I figure, John, you're going to get a stage and you get to pick on me. So, you know, turnabout is fair play. John and I still ride a lot together, and every now and then he even beats me in a race. Let's talk about that. Herbalife Triathlon Los Angeles last year. No, we'll, we'll, we'll have that discussion later. How does an old guy like you, or like me, mess with a young guy like you? I just wanted to know. He kicked my butt in Leadville, but we're going back. We'll see what happens this year. So we got something new here. We launched yesterday. Talk about a healthy, active lifestyle. We got this bad boy right here. This is a trainer in a box. This is go anywhere you want and take a trainer with you. Now, we didn't develop this just to compete with that other company out there who's got that stuff that seems to be creating a lot of adverse events. We developed this out of a base of science and thinking about strength and core and flexibility. And we went to someone who gets it, who's created programs for Olympic athletes and it's interesting, I didn't realize that our paths had crossed a while ago. And you may not know this, when I had my knee surgery at Curlin Job Clinic, you were down there running that physiotherapy lab of theirs, which is considered one of the best in the world. This gentleman has worked with Kobe Bryant, he's worked with Jackie Joyner Kersey, he's worked with Pete Sampras, with Flojo, he's worked with some of the top Olympic athletes. He opened up his own physiotherapy business, lab. My daughter actually went there and she's gotten a lot better. Thank God, thank you. That's removed a big drain off me. But what he's done is he's bring and he's brought this Olympic science of physiotherapy to the masses. And what we're doing now is bringing it even further because we're bringing it to, to our Herbalife family to spread out throughout the world. And we're pricing this product so easily and so reasonably with full volume points out there, just so we're clear about that. Make sure production, everything in here. But you don't know this guy, but he's got a tape in here and he introduces part of the, not a tape, but DVD, and it, which introduces the whole program. 30 years he's been doing this. He is now part of the Herbalife family. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in Herbalife, would you welcome Mr. Bob Forrester. Bob, stand up and say hello to everybody. You know, you know, one of the things I love about Bob is that he gives back in his community. He's a volunteer, does things with his children, with his family, with people throughout the community help improve the lives of others. That is such a hallmark of our company. And it inspires people. And you are such a perfect fit for this company. So don't ever leave us. Keep us going. We'll keep you successful. You keep us successful. 
It's a nice, harmonious relationship, and it'll work very, very well. Thank you, Bob, and welcome to Herbalife. Now, somebody's saying, oh, he forgot somebody. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. Now, who could that be? <laughs> I just wonder who could that be? <laughs> So we need someone to be able to speak to distributors throughout the world, to make it simple, understandable, to educate, to tie all of our science together. This young man started like Bob did as a personal trainer, He's a star athlete at UCLA, on the track team, met David Heber and decided to continue his education and become a doctor, an MD. Came to Herbalife and it was like a gift that dropped right in the middle of our offices one day. This incredibly smart, incredibly talented, incredibly charismatic, sort of good looking. <laughs> Guy comes and joins us, and he puts all our efforts together, and he spends tireless hours on the road working with distributors day in and day out. He eats, breathes, sleeps, herbal life. You personify everything we are every day. You're a great human being, a great guy, and a great part of this company. Dr. Luigi Grotten, ladies and gentlemen. Cool guy. I think I even got him on a bike once or twice. But he's got those fleet feet, that's why he likes to run a lot. So all this is fabulous. All these scientists we have and the formulations we're putting into our product and build the best product of the world. Now we have a healthy, active lifestyle product. Get people active, make them look better, feel better. An opportunity for distributors to have, whether it's in their offices, clubs, whatever, an opportunity for a workout with customers. We've got these wonderful new business methods going, I'll talk about in a minute, that are bringing people to boot camps and creating just so much excitement inside our company. Hello, boot camp kids in here. But none of this would work in today's environment if we didn't have full control of our product, a huge step in a huge direction for this company. I was in a senator's office a while ago, a senator who does not like the supplement industry, an enemy. You know, you go stare those guys right in the eye because you want them to see who they don't like and what they don't like. It's called diplomacy in some quarters, it's called stupidity in others. I like the diplomacy part. <laughs> The senator picked up our product and looked at me and said, I have no beef with you. And I'm thinking, liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> he said, but here's my problem with your industry. He said, I want to know that what it says on your can is in your drink or in your powder or in your tab. And what is in there works in here. You know something? I thought that was pretty reasonable. I didn't think that was an unreasonable request from an unreasonable person. But we want to guarantee our quality. We want to guarantee our functionality. We want to guarantee our science. And really, in today's world, as we went around and Rich Gudis, Rich, stand up and say hi to everybody, our chief operating officer, just real quick here. Everybody say hi to Rich. You don't know him very well, but you get to know Rich. Rich and I sat down one day. And we talked about that meeting that Brett and I had been in in that office. And you remember that, Brett, that day with the Honorable Dick Durbin, the senator from Illinois. And I said, that's a reasonable request. And we talked to Rich about it. And this was a long time ago. And we said, Rich, we need to have the best supply chain on the face of the earth, not just in this industry, but on the face of the earth. 
we can afford to do this. We'll sit down with our board of directors and we'll have a discussion about the future of Herbalife and the protection of our product and the building of the best infrastructure. And so we that day concocted this little seed to feed initiative. We said we want to be able to go in the ground with our own products in our own fields. We want to be able to pull that product from those fields into our facilities where we remove the actives, put them in our cans and jars, and deliver them through our own distribution mechanism to our distributors. Rich said, that's a big project, Michael. And I said, Rich, you're the man to do it. You can do this. We can build this company to a greater height than ever before. And that's what the future is, is to take us even farther and deeper. Someday in this company, and these guys are going to wince at that, at this, because we have a kind of a secret project Steve and I do going on about looking at an agriculture division inside this company. So we not only have our own crops, we'll have our own seeds. And we'll go even deeper than that. That we'll make sure the footprint of those. This is going to happen. Not by will alone. I'm going to have to get a few people to agree with me on this. My board's sitting here, too. I'm pitching them at the same time. I'm pitching everybody today. There's a pitch going on in here. You guys know about a pitch, right? Doran taught me about a pitch a long time ago. You know, We're making a pitch here, Doran. That's what we're doing. We're pitching, baby. We are going further and deeper and farther than we ever have. We are about to unleash a facility in Changsha that is going to be revolutionary inside our business. It's going to create a control of our teas and all of our active ingredients inside our company, where we're going to deliver a cassette of active ingredients to our manufacturers who still co-pack for us, but we will control what goes into their door. And this is coming online in October. Yes? October, November? Sooner? Does it cost any more money <laughs> to go sooner? <laughs> These are some of our facilities around the world that we want to show you, but we're not done. We're just getting started. We know that we have to deliver to you the best product in the world. Not just a good product, but the best product in the world. Safety, control measures. You know, there's a lot going on out there. You read about major pharmaceutical companies that are having tremendous issues with their manufacturing and their safety, recalling products all the time. Our company, look at some of these things that we have in our laboratories. We have an NMRI, a nuclear magnetic resonance imaging, is that correct? Did I get that right, Rich? I'm an acronym specialist. NMRI. We are one of the few companies in the world, see that NMRI testing right there? That have these kind of facilities so we can look at our product for the active ingredients to make sure that the quality control, the consistency of our product is there. These machines cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. More? Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Rich would probably hit me with a bill on Monday for millions of dollars. But the reality is we want quality control. We want to know from those seeds that put the soy plants in the ground in Illinois, that put those aloe plants in the ground in northern New Me in Mexico, that put those tea fields in around the world, in China and around the world, that we have the highest quality control anywhere anytime and at any place. That's our jobs here, to deliver you the best product on the face of the earth. Now we're just getting started there. Our goal, our goal is to be the gold standard. There's too much in our industry of false promises and false hopes. I have a problem with our industry sometimes. So many of the products that sit out there that make all these claims. There was a NBC News special a couple weeks ago on TV, and it made me shudder. The interesting thing is, is that the direct selling organization, who is in charge of the responsibility of going to different governments and different agencies and organizations around the world, needs to be a stronger voice. Our direct selling associations around the world need to be a better voice. How do you do something like that? Well, one thing you could do, you could get one of your executives to become head of the DSA. So I'm here to announce today that the next head of the DSA is our own Brett Chapman. Brett, stand up and say hello to everybody. 
Congratulations, Brett. Now that's a big deal. That's a big deal for us because that gives us standing and it gives us a place as we grow, as we get bigger. We've got to get better. As we get better on the product side, as we build a future of seed to feed, of more products under our own roofs. How many of you went down and saw our manufacturing facility down in Lake Forest? Him. Pretty impressive, huh? Well, guess what? That's one of many that are coming your way. Soon, we'll have a facility on the East Coast of the United States. We'll look at other countries like India and Brazil as we grow our opportunities. We will start to work more closely with our co-packers in Italy and throughout the world to make sure that the quality standards that we expect, the highest standards in the world, are in the products that you'll get. I hope I'm not boring you guys. Are you falling asleep out there? Are you still with me? Are you still with me? All right. What did Mark say about the future? Mark said the future is bright beyond compare. And that's where we are today. We're staring out into a future. I've scrambled up that tree. I got my little telescope in my hands. And we got something special. The supply chain is only going to get better. The opportunity for products is only going to get better. We have more people approaching us today than ever before. I got a call from a former head of a major pharmaceutical company what, two weeks ago, a week ago, whose brother-in-law is a pharmacologist, that's what Lou is, pharmacologist, his brother-in-law is a pharmacologist, says, we have developed the best, and I'll leave blank, I'll leave it blank, product in the world because we believe it's got a tremendous re release pattern. This is a CEO of a major pharmaceutical company, left, retired, gone into a different world, and his brother-in-law is a pharmacologist, and he called us, you know why? Because they're looking at Herbalife, and they see that distribution opportunity that we have and they see what we are doing with our science and the quality of our manufacturing. And they're calling us now. Our doorbells are ringing. Our doors are being knocked on because they want you to be part of their organization. And they think they've got something special and they're coming to Herbalife. This is what building this does. This is why the future is so bright. This is why I could stand on my desk and dance because we got something so special here. But that business opportunity that invites people to us, the business opportunity, you know, we use that word business opportunity. That's you. That's our flesh and blood. That's the emotion, the passion, the quality, the integrity that is our distributors. That's you guys. That's you as leaders. This is a high level meeting here. I don't need to do what I do in an extravaganza and do backflips across the stage and get everybody all excited. But I do want to show you the passion and the heart that's in here. And the reason it's it is because of you. But you have the responsibility to create more leaders. And you have the responsibility to keep the integrity of this company. And you have the responsibility to make sure that Mark Hughes' dream is as alive for the next generation as it was for you. That's your responsibility. You've got to make it happen. We can't do that every day. This is what's unique about us. In our analyst meeting yesterday, it was a question, how do you control your distributors? <laughs> really? Our distributors control each other is our answer. You have this incredible responsibility to make sure that our integrity is better than it's ever been. And I'm going to get serious about this because we can't have one weak chain in this link. One link, one weak link in this chain. That's a powerful statement. We cannot have it. We have to make sure the expectations that we give people are real, that the promises are fulfilled, that we're not playing games, we're not switch pitching, we're not making economic promises that are not real, we're not making health claim promises that are not real, we're not playing doctor, we're playing medicine. That is what will protect this company into the future. You've got the best product on the face of the earth, you've got the best business opportunity on the face of the earth. The best. Look at all these millionaires down here. I heard someone stay on, say on stage the other day, well, an extra million a year would be pretty good. I'm going an extra million. Johnny boy, do you know there's people out there an extra 500 bucks? Do you know what that would mean to them? God bless you for saying that, but I thought, wow, what a company. 
that we can talk that way, that we can have that discussion. This is an amazing company, this business opportunity, the opportunity that Mark dreamed of, that he laid the business plan out on his bed with, that he built the royalty system with, that inspired so many of you to become leaders, to change your lives, to build and grow and prosper. It is, as John Peterson always says, this is our golden goose. We are not going to harm it. We are going to protect it, and we are going to build it. And we are going to do it so that everybody who walks in the door of Herbalife, female, male, small, tall, any skin color, any denomination, they have a home in Herbalife. They have an opportunity here. We're a fair play, fair field, but you have to protect this company's integrity every day. That is a big part. You know, you're leaders, ladies and gentlemen. You're not sitting in this room because you're just thinking about, well, should I join Herbalife? That's what extravaganzas are about. That's what HOMs are about. This is a summit of leaders. This is like a United Nations meeting here. Go out and create a peaceful world. Go out and create a great world. Go out and create a world of opportunity. This is what your jobs are. How are we doing? We doing all right? We doing okay? Are we doing okay? <laughs> you know, I always look down at Jerry and I ask her the same question and she always goes, what? Because I look at Jerry as being kind of the mama of, of Herbalife. You know, and I say, are we doing okay? Are we doing all right? Will you pass? All right? Okay, so far so good. Danny says okay. So business opportunity. What's our role? What is the company's role besides protecting the golden goose, making sure that playing field is level? You know, one of the best roles we have here is to take these great ideas that people come up with, these incredible ideas, these life-changing ideas. Thank you, Enrique and Chella. And happy birthday, Chella, today, wherever you are. Um, she not, she's, she's coming? Well, everybody wish Chella a happy birthday when you see her. But our job is to take these great ideas, these innovations, no matter where they are, no matter what they might be, and to spread them as fast as possible. We have the opportunity, obviously, as the company, to look at all the numbers. We see who's flying. And we want to be the wind beneath their wings. We want to fly with them. And we want you to fly along and be able to see. Not to confuse, I got a kick out of the European presentation yesterday. All the different business ideas floating around the stage. Everybody running, oh, the next idea, you know. That was a pretty good presentation, pretty interesting. But in this company today, there are more business ideas, more opportunities for distributors to grow and prosper than there ever has been. We ran a lot of you through, and I mentioned it early, this boot camp, fit club, that's being done here. Listen to these excited. Bringing new, young distributors to this company. I ride my bike to work quite a bit. My board loves that idea. You know, the, I, I got to tell you, I got to pick on the board a little bit here. Just a little bit. Sorry, guys. Some, the board said to me, we're a little worried about you riding your bike to work. I said, okay. Solution? We want to hire an off-duty police officer. Sorry, this is just a little joke. Sorry, guys. But Leroy's looking at me like, your compensation is screwed next year if you finish this story. We want to hire a police officer to follow you to work on your bike. And I said, what for? Is he going to get the best view of me getting killed? <laughs> he gets the, he, you know, oh, I, you should have seen what I saw out there. Our job in business opportunity is to prosper along with you, is to take these new ideas, these fit clubs. And as I ride my bike to work and I see these 100, 150 people on a beach wearing Herbalife product, Herbalife gear, I mean, it excites me to no end. It says, it says we are reaching deeper into our communities, and that's what this business opportunity is about, city to city. When you live in a community, and you are known as the Herbalife person in that community, you have a responsibility to live up to what Herbalife is. That's why we want to go deeper. We get these clubs going, we get these trainings going, we get the opportunity deeper in the community. 
We get more people wearing our brand. We get more people excited about it. You know, I, I'm staring at Mark right now, Mark and Jill sitting out there. Thank you for your good ideas. And Mark said something to me this week. He said, Michael, he said, when we first started, we struggled to get people to wear Herbalife. And he says, now they won't take it off. He says, that's all they wear. Everywhere in my clubs, everywhere we're doing, everybody's got Herbalife on. It's because we're living in our community. And we're going deeper with that opportunity. There's a research done by McKinsey out talking about the shifting nature of cities in our world. There was an article yesterday in the Los Angeles Times about the number of immigrant communities and the growth of minorities in cities throughout the world. It smells like opportunity because these are people looking for an opportunity. Here and just south of here in central, south central Los Angeles, we have Central American communities just prospering all over the place. Ecuadorans and Guatemalans and Nicaraguans and, and all sorts of Costa Ricans, everything happening. These are opportunities for us to grow this business, to bring prosperity to people, to bring them a chance to have a club, to open up, to make an extra 15 or $20 a day, which is a ton to these people, a ton. And I know that doesn't sound big to you big shots in here, but think about where you started. Think about those first moments that you were in herbal life, and those extra 50 bucks meant paying an electrical bill, or a phone bill, or putting your kid in a different school, or buying a book. This is what this company's all about. In these communities, we go deeper. Jim Rohn said it, a lot of people selling a little is a powerful company. It's a powerful opportunity. Don't lose sight of that, you millionaires down here and all you people with all your money. That's fantastic. Keep doing it. Keep growing. Keep driving. Keep dreaming. Keep building. But don't forget the new people who are coming into our company every single day. And look for that of prosperity and that opportunity. Don't forget about them. So, hi Donnie, as we build this company city by city, think about this for a second, Des said this on stage, a lot of you have heard this and I want to repeat it. We've got this tremendous result, this tremendous result in Iceland, it's ridiculous what's happening there, 16 volume points I think it is per capita, meaning that 16 volume points are consumed by every Icelandic human, Icelandism or whatever they are, Icelandics, I guess that's the way you say it, every year, 16 volume points. Our company does under a dollar or under one volume point. So think, one, 16, Ford, exciting. Our company 16 times larger than it is today. Iceland has about 350,000 people, and most of them live in Reykjavik. So it's a community there. So they in Iceland cannot afford to soil the earth of Herbalife. They can't afford to do it because everybody knows everybody there. 350,000 people living in one city, one country. Hey, Val, hi, Sam, my friend. They're all on a first name basis in that country. Think about that. Do you know how many communities there are in the world of over 300 or 350,000 or greater? It's thousands. We've got an opportunity we're just scratching the surface with, just touching it. But we build this person by person, community by community. We reach them on a face-to-face, -face, person to person basis, and we change the nutritional habits of the world. We give people a business opportunity and a health opportunity. And think of what happens. This company is better positioned today than it ever has been. There's an obesity epidemic out there, ladies and gentlemen. There is an employment epidemic, a lack of employment, a lack of good income. These two epidemics, and where does Herbalife sit? Huh, at the intersection of health and wealth. All we have to do is make sure that we live up to this business opportunity that Mark originally designed and dreamed about. The one that got us to five billion and is gonna take us well beyond. The one that builds prosperity and hope and dreams in a real sense as long as we build the expectation properly inside this company. Now one of our issues is access. How do we get more access to our product? We've opened up more distribution centers all over the world. You see probably some pretty photos of them pop up here and there. We've opened up opportunities through small retailers in Mexico. We looked at it in India. 
but we need to go even further. We need to find a solution that will give distributors only, only distributors, not customers, distributors only, an access point to our product. The ability for a distributor to use their ID in a secure environment to go get product in communities so we can expand distribution so much quicker. Get access to the product, support the daily consumption methods that are being built by you, community by community, country by country, globally, across our footprint. So how do you do that? How do you do that? Well, we went and we sought a certain group of people out. Rich gets a lot of credit for this, and Des does too, to go look and find an opportunity for better access points. So we came up with this little machine, and it's not called a vending machine. You get penalized for that inside the company. It's a distribution mechanism here, and she's got a name. She's called Angelina because she's got an animated character in there and she'll take your distributor ID. So let's take a look, just real quick, my first video of the day, and usually I'm a little stronger and longer on videos with you, but our first video, and this is what's coming, this is why the future is bright beyond compare. Let's take a look at Angelina and see what's happening here. We're just getting started, ladies and gentlemen. We're just getting started. Not me, I'm in the middle. But you, your opportunity to grow this company, to build it stronger and better, to reach more people, more access points for our product, a better, higher quality product, business opportunity that's growing and flourishing through new methods, sustainable throughout the world, our quality higher our reputation stronger, our ethics intact and unapproachable. No weak links in our chain. Your job is to help us make sure and ensure that we have the highest integrity and quality of business opportunity of any company in the world. Are you with me on that? You joining me in that? Yes, can I get a yes on that? Best product, best business opportunity. It sounds like I'm an extravaganza, but we're looking into the future here today. The future of product, the future of distribution, the future of ideas spread throughout the world. I think Mark would be overjoyed with his company today. I think the promise is greater than ever before. But one thing we've added to the company over the last decade is this concept of building a brand, of making people part of the process of this company. The brand, the brand, the brand. When we talk about an extravaganza at meetings, we say you're the brand of this company. The extension of the apparel line, use wear talk into new and exciting areas of getting our name for identity on the chest of teams and players throughout the world, of local marketing activities that are expanding, of renaming big events. We took the Los Angeles Triathlon, and it's now called the Herbalife Triathlon Los Angeles. How cool is that? And when you think about that, 
That's an opportunity available to every city in the world. You as distributors can, in your local community, there, everybody has a triathlon nowadays. So you just take it and grab it. You call it the Herbalife Triathlon Maracaibo, the Herbalife Triathlon Seoul, the Herbalife Triathlon Austin. You're gonna do that, I'm counting on you to do that. And that's an opportunity to use the product, wear the brand and talk to people. That's an opportunity to show a healthy, active lifestyle. That's an opportunity to get our products and reach deeper into our communities, to be part of the social fabric of our communities, to build the brand. You think about it. You think about big companies and the way they go about building their brand. They stack up a big pile of money on a table. And some of it goes to production of ads. And some of it goes to buying media. And some of it goes to buying goodwill of some sort. And this big stack of money starts to get real small. And then when they go in and ask all the marketing executives, how successful is that? They go, oh, I, pretty, I don't know. Good, great. Because they don't know where half the money goes. They don't know how to value it. They don't know how to equate the value proposition to that. But here's what we have. We have an army of marketing possibilities in this company. It's called distributors who can go out and be the brand of this company who can create the impression in the community and create the impression with customers and new distributors of a wonderful company, of a place people want to be, of a company you want to be part of, of a family institution in the local marketplaces that you want to join. Nice people. People who are the brand of this company every day, who pull the door open for you, who make you feel good about being part of this company. Brand ambassadors. Millions of them, an army of them. Could you imagine that an Apple or a Coke or a Pepsi or a General Motors or a Mercedes or a Porsche could have those kind of opportunities? Yeah, they have dealerships, but people have to come to those. We're out in the community. We go to you. We do things in the marketplace. This is what's going to lift our brand. The identity, the authenticity, the relationships will all create for us a bigger and better brand than ever before, because we have an army of brand ambassadors in this company. Now, with that said, the future is pretty strong, because I don't know many other companies, there's a few out there, but you got your own team. We just signed a 10-year deal with the Los Angeles Galaxy. This is your team. So for 10 years, this is your team. There you go. Get a camera on that guy out there with his Herbalife Galaxy jersey on. So this is. You got your own team, you got your own song, you got your own team, you got your own products, business opportunity. This is your team. This is what we told them when we were negotiating with them, lowering the fee a little bit. We said, look, we're gonna bring you a worldwide audience as we have before, and they've seen it because they travel with this team internationally, they see the distributors fill the stands when we go to the Singapores and to the Chinas and to the Philippines and we travel with this team in Europe and we go all over. They see Herbalife distributors coming to these events. And then they take that team and go into the community to our Casa Herbalife's, and the team loves it. And they see how active we are and how active our distributors are. And Tim Liewicki, who's the head of AEG, said, I just love being with Herbalife. But don't take my word for it. Let me show you the video from the press conference that just happened last week. And we did two things in this. We did one, of course, we announced the relationship. The other is we created a two and a half million dollar fund that'll operate through the Herbalife Family Foundation and the LA Galaxy Foundation to go into communities. And we announced a $1 million effort with the Children's Institute here in Los Angeles to help build a new children's center in Watts through the LA Galaxy and the Herbalife Family Foundation. This is a very cool thing we're doing here. So let's take a look at our press conference.
So you know what really, you know it's really cool? When that happens, when we do something like that, all of a sudden social media responds to us. And you are all experts in social media. It's called search engine optimization. And you see all these search engines go around. And all of a sudden Herbalife's up at the top of everything. All this positivity. Herbalife gives away a million dollars. Herbalife $2.5 million. Herbalife Galaxy deal. And everything you open up on social media is about the positivity of Herbalife. How fantastic is that? And the opportunity for us to grow and build better impressions with people also happens by getting around some of these very top stars. We got this little soccer player, this little footballer, excuse me, in Spain, this Argentinian kid. Anybody heard of him? Messi, this guy? You know, um, you know he's, 20, he's 24 years old and he just set, I love this, the all-time scoring record for FC Barcelona at 24 years old. And this is our guy, and he's fueled by Herbalife, which makes it even better. So he goes on his social media site and likes Herbalife, right? And all of a sudden we got hundreds of thousands, look at this on there, look at that, 33 million, 757 million people like Herbalife, and they like Messi, that he likes Herbalife. He's got a kind of a scowl on his face there, but he's actually a very nice young man. He's traveled with us around the world, gone to our Casa Herbalife programs in Korea. You were there for that. Very special. Loves the kids. I think he likes the kids better than he likes the adults. He says, still a kid. He's freaking 24 years old. I mean, this is a kid out there. And he is phenomenal. And you know, we've put him in advertisements that we're using on a global basis. We're fish out of the water. We had him playing ping pong. So here's what we're doing today. We're letting you see for the first time ever the new Messi app. And you'll see that it's silent because we have the ability to use this on a global basis as we do different things like we did the World Football Challenge last year and we get advertising time. We'll slide this ad in. It'll slide in on our networks anytime we have a TV deal. This is literally the Michael Jordan of this era. This is the hottest sports athlete on the face of the earth right now. So let's take a look. It's the first time it's going to be seen by anybody, anybody outside our offices. So let's take a look at the new Messi ad, ladies and gentlemen. This is yours. Pretty cool. I'm gonna use one of my daughter's quotes. Use one of my daughter's quotes for this. She said, uh, <laughs> Thank you guys. God bless you. Thank you. So, thank you guys very much, thank you. You know, my daughter, she said to me a while ago, she said, you know, Dan, Herbalife's cool. She's very cool. She loves, you know, taking her Herbalife stuff to school. There's girls in her school who are all drinking the shakes every day. It's very cool. And the funniest thing was, recently we had a, she came home and said, hey, Dad, how come we don't have some of that new mint shake here? 
in the house. I was like, how does she know about that? And she said, well, there's some girls at school who are having the mint shake at lunch, and I had it, it's really good. How come we don't have the mint shake at his house? And I'm like, whoa. I said, Rich, you better not run short on that mint shake. You know, we need that in the home. So her day starts every day with an Herbalife shake, and now it's a mint shake. But Herbalife is cool, that's what she says. And I love hearing that because we got a cool company. And we're going to keep it cool by keeping it hot. And you're going to keep it hot out there by growing this business community by community by building this brand. And what happens when all these, this great product and our business opportunity acts with high integrity and our brand all starts to make our, it makes our identity bigger and people start activating it locally more and we bring folks in like Beckham and Messi and the Galaxy and all the wonderful things we're doing locally, whether it's the Venezuelan kids in their soccer jerseys or it is our cricket players in India or whoever it is around the world who's building this brand for us on a daily basis. Our reputation starts to grow. We get bigger. We get stronger. We get better. The pressure comes on us to perform more as a corporate team to make sure that we're supplying you with the tools and the opportunities that you need. But there's something else that happens. We become enriched by being part of Herbalife. We are enlightened by the experience here. We are enlivened by the lives we lead at Herbalife, but we also take on that famous saying to those who are given much, much is expected. And that's where the heart of this company comes in. That gives us the opportunity to have a social mechanism, not just a social business mechanism, but a heart inside Herbalife that we call our image. And that image is our reputation. It's who we are. It's relationships with governments and press, of course. It is our community outreach programs. It's the money that we give to different organizations. It is the event like we had with Diana Ross here in this room the other night, and you were so generous, and God bless you for that. And thank you for the money that we have raised that will go to help the lives of vulnerable children. Herbalife is special because it is part of our corporate culture. It's not just something we do on the side. It is one of the fundamental parts of the nature of this company, started by Mark Hughes, the Herbalife Family Foundation, the belief that we can help children who are vulnerable and build a better world. And someday, I promise you, someday we're going to see a president's team member come from one of those Casa Herbalifes. That is a dream that will come true inside this company. It will be very special. And someday we will reach into nations who struggle with nutritional needs like Africa. Today in Africa, through a relationship we have with the Global Alliance for Nutrition, we put out micronutrient packs, branded Herbalife. This is not an economic opportunity, this is a social opportunity for us. But it will build the brand because people and mothers in Africa will see that little pack with our Herbalife leaf on it. And they will understand that someone from far away is concerned about who they are in their community and it is their friends at Herbalife who love them. And we will build a road and a bridge into the future of Africa for our distributors to walk across. And we will have an agricultural program there. And there I am again with that agricultural program. And we will grow some crops in Africa and we will turn it into an active ingredient product and build a business opportunity for those mothers and those children and those daughters and those fathers who need help to sustain themselves. I don't have the roadmap for it right now. We're just sticking our toe in the water there. But it is a dream, a reality we believe in strongly. It'll have an economic return that's valuable to them on that continent. It may not make millionaires out of them, but it will make people prosperous. And it will build an opportunity. And it will create an Herbalife that's bigger, better, and stronger than ever before. We live in Herbalife on a set of visions, missions, and values here that we believe strongly. And we carry this with us every single day. And it is about who we are, the integrity, the honesty, the transparency with which we live and deal with. It is about raising all boats in the harbor with a high tide of integrity, about believing in a company, in a mission, and in an opportunity to emancipate people, to bring people more, to take care of those who are in need, to those who are given much, and we have been given much by Mark's dream and Mark's opportunity. Much is expected. So we will continue to do this today with 72 Casa Herbalifes, tomorrow with 500 Casa Herbalifes in the next 10 years of this company, where we will touch more lives than ever before. We will become more 
community active and involved. This is the Herbalife of today and tomorrow. This is the Herbalife that excites all of us. This is the Herbalife of promise, hope, and dreams come true. This is your Herbalife, your company. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to be your CEO. Proud beyond belief. Sorry, get a little choked up on that. Um, the future, the future is ours because we're laying the groundwork for the next generation of leaders, the next members of the Herbalife family. What's it look like? It looks like 10 to 20 billion volume points, more access than ever before. The nutrition company that everybody looks up to, an agricultural program inside this company, a $200 million Mark Hughes bonus. We're just getting started in here. President team in every city in the world, 500 Casa Herbalites. That's my vision of the future. What is yours? What dreams do you have? Write them down. Make them happen. Build your organizations on integrity and hope and dreams come true. Continue to be leaders. Find more leaders in this company each and every day. Love Herbalife. Protect Herbalife. Grow Herbalife. Build Herbalife. Be Herbalife. Because we are different. We are unique. We are special. We're the greatest company on the face of the earth. So why do we do this? Why do we do this? For our economic prosperity? Absolutely. To change the lives of others? You bet. But why do we look into the future? Why do we build a company with so many assets and infrastructure needs? Because we believe that the future is our responsibility. This week we had future Gen H members in a camp here. When I first heard this idea, I went, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You know, Jonathan List jumping up and down on a desk going, this is the greatest idea we've ever had in a company. And that's fine. We've got to give him his due. And so we had this camp here of future generation Herbalifers. And this is why you build this company for the future. Come on out here, kids. These are your children, the children of Herbalife. This is our future, ladies and gentlemen. Here they are, the future Gen Hers of Herbalife. Give me five. <laughs> How are you guys doing? <laughs>